guys, are y'all ready to get started? This is going to be the best program. You're going to have such a good time. Now, I've kind of laughed at myself this morning because we have had a health screen, we have a wellness coach, and we've eaten cheeseburgers. I don't know how that all comes together, right? But, we're, but let's give the Hickory Street Cafe a big hand for those cheeseburgers. It was fun, and it was about having a picnic, and it was about fellowship. And you know, really, that's, we have learned that that's a lot about wellness too, right? About that fellowship and being together. Certainly over the last two years, we've learned a lot about what really keeps us healthy. Well, Miss Tracy's not here today, but I'm just gonna say to the library, thank you so much for allowing Coosa Valley Medical Center to be one of your partners and to be able to come in here and learn and share and be together. Our library does an amazing job and we're so thankful that we get to partner with them to bring this program Community Links. And we kind of picked up a little bit this month. Now you guys know that we'll take a little break in the summer because the children's coming in and we're gonna leave out, but we will be back in September. So between now and September, you guys gotta get out there and spread the word. We gotta get our group back up and back in here because we're gonna have some great, great topics and things that we'll talk about that we'll talk about Coosa Valley Medical Center and how to keep us well and whole and, and how to um, make sure that we're keeping our health in check. Today's program is really about taking our health back. Would you guys agree with me that during COVID that some of us might have put our own health on the, on the back bench because we kind of became overwhelmed with the pandemic we got a little fearful. We had to stay in a lot. And I know for a fact that a lot of people going into the doctor's office because you were fearful. I'm not going into the ER because we were fearful. We were trying to protect ourselves. Well, today I wanted us to talk about how, how do we start to take our health back? How, if you haven't had or seen your primary care doctor in the last year, then we need to get you back in there because while COVID was a serious pandemic, all those other health issues that we have can become serious too if we don't keep in check with our physicians and keep our health screenings up and keep up with our numbers. And so today was about how do we get back on track? How, how do we get ourselves back into that wellness thought process? So, Robin Angelo, who many of you know, probably most of you know, is going to talk to us about today about how to do that. Now, most of you know Robin is the director of our MRI, right? And she does a fabulous job there, but she's also a wellness coach. So today is going to be fun. We're going to learn a lot. And our challenge is, when we leave here today, we're all motivated and inspired to get back on that wellness track and to make sure that all of our health issues are staying exactly where we need for them to be and that we will stay as well as we can because guys, we got a lot to give to our community. So with that, Robin, I'm gonna ask you to come on and we're gonna take a few minutes and it's gonna be interactive, it's gonna be fun, and guess what? This is Mother's Day week, so at the end, we're gonna draw for some door prizes. But thank you for being here today. Please tell your friends. Know that Coosa Valley Medical Center is here to meet you at your point of need, no matter what that may be. And you can always pick up the phone and call us. We want to be there. We want to help you. And we'll do whatever we can to get you connected. So, Robin, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Vanessa. I know you're finishing up eating, but a couple of you in the audience always knows I like to set the tone for the beginning. So, who feels energetic like you might could stand up? Because I think there, Sarah's going to play us some music. I want to see everybody kind of clapping their hands because today is about movement, right? So, if you finished your your uh, lunch that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, everybody stand up and Sarah, have you got our music going? This is, this is a song that I think is a really good beat and I think you can do any kind of movement you want, right? Sarah, you can turn that up for us. So let's start up, I know you, come on up here, come on. We gotta clap, everybody, here we go. Janice, I know you know 
know the rhythm. Here we go. I want everybody to just let it go and think about yourself. No show. You don't have to look a certain way, act a certain way. Just clap. Yeah, there you go. I like that right there. Come on, let me see you move. I love it. I love it. Oh, I like it. All right, here we go. Clap. Let's go. Move it. And I love that. Awesome. This is what I'm talking about. Today is about movement. Keep it going. One more time. Five, six, seven, eight. I love it. Awesome. Give yourself a hand. Woo. You can have a seat. All right. I think she gets the best award, the lady in the pink, with moving those hips. Hey, listen, Vanessa and Lindsay uh, and the rest of the marketing team, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to be here with you today and share something that I'm very, very passionate about. Um, as Vanessa said, I come to you as Director of Operations for our MRI services at the hospital, but I also come to you as an integrative health coach. And this couple in particular, they know me uh, from what, 25, 30 years ago. Um, I started out um, graduating from college in exercise science and nutrition, landed a really wonderful Fortune 500 corporate job in corporate wellness with Kimberly Clark, worked there for 12 years. And um, that's where I applied all my principalities and all my education and learning. And then as we all know, uh, as a community, um, Bowater took over and decided that corporate wellness was not in their plan and asked us all to leave on December 31st, and I forgot, forgot the year, I think it was 2001. <laughs> so you know what, everything happens for a reason, and I'm, I'm so thankful that my path turned out the way it did because I got into diagnostic imaging in Birmingham, um, then I was transferred to my home community, my home county, where I get to serve the people that I love the most, right? I don't have to, and I really, you know, don't have to go outside of Talladega County to serve people. We have enough people in our community to serve. So I'm so thankful to have the opportunity to do that. Before we get in, before we spring into wellness, I think it's important that we do take a moment to think about where we've been the last two years. It's been tough. Um, some of you out in the audience may have emotions and memories uh, still that you've not been able to shake. Your life has been affected in one way or the other. Some of us um, have bounced right back to somewhat of a normal, um, but we long for that refreshment. And so I can't think of a better way to refresh ourselves, get a fresh mindset, uh, than talking about wellness. Because as Vanessa said earlier, how many of us have put our self-care and our wellness on the back burner? I know I, I, I did um, there for a while. So it's time now, not that COVID is over with. Okay, I think we're still gonna be dealing with COVID. But in my opinion, and that's what it is an opinion, is that it'll be much like the flu. You know, there'll be a vaccine yearly. Uh, we'll have to be cautious about that. But it's going to be something that we'll probably be dealing with the rest of our lives. So, you know, I think we're at a place of somewhat of normal. And how do we start anew? How do we start fresh? So today, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about springing into wellness. There are six things that I believe are crucial in starting your wellness journey. Um, myself, uh, the past gosh, what, 37 years, in particular the last seven years, and for sure in the last three years. I have figured out that creating a platform of stability, resiliency, and longevity is a must to handle the rigors of the world. The world is a good place, but the world can be tough. And so when we have this platform of strength and being able to bounce back and being able to live a long, high-quality life, it's, it's about having that platform. And it's about pulling in these six key elements that are very simple, that you've heard about before, but I think it's um, a, a good time to be refreshed with those. So with that being said, let's, let's click over to the first slide. And I'm gonna uh, look at my notes here so that we make sure 
uh, we hit all the key points. So the six areas that I have found to be crucial in, in anybody's wellness journey is increasing movement and exercise, nourishing your body through bio-individual food plan, creating a plan for stress reduction and life balance, mastering healing sleep, developing interdisciplinary healthcare team, and identifying those educational and resource uh, supportive resources. So on the next slide, let's look at increasing movement and exercise. How many times do you get frustrated when people tell you, hey, you need to go to the gym. You need to get on that walking track. It's, I, I'm here to tell you, it's a new approach. You can do that, and if you're doing that, fantastic. If you're going to the gym and bench pressing uh, your body weight, fantastic. If you're running you know, five miles around the track, great. But it's not necessarily about that. It is about incorporating some type of exercise activity and movement throughout your day and throughout your week. This is just a sample of what I do. But what I do is not going to work for this gentleman, right? <laughs> because we are all bio-individuals. What's going to work for Priscilla is not going to work for Janice. That is my duty as an integrative health coach, is to find out what is it that you need in your life today, and what is your, your body chemistry and your makeup? What are your goals and your dreams and your aspirations? Um, I usually try to do a quick morning, uh, like a little five-minute morning routine, where I do 20 ab leg raises and push-ups and uh, squats. During the week, I try to hit uh, strength training on the machines right there at the Coosa Valley Medical Center gym, um, as well as I engage in a HIT class two times per week. Somewhere spurs throughout the week, I try to do a one-hour nature walk or uh, one hour on the treadmill. And here's the movement part, using stairs instead of elevators. Uh, I use a stand-up desk at work, but guess what? you use a stand-up desk at work, you still got to move. Because if you're standing in one place all day long, or you're sitting in that chair, or on that couch, or in that easy chair all day long, things can go awry. So my staff, from time to time, will be walking past my office, and they might see me doing toe raises, or squats, or a couple of jumping jacks, anything to get my body moving. So that's the philosophy that we want there. I like to go see people in their office when I can, instead of texting or calling. So in your mind, you know, what are some ways that you can start to increase movement in your day? If you're watching TV and here comes a commercial, I'm not saying you've got to get up, but you could move your arms. You could swing your arms left and right. You could be sitting in a chair and moving those legs, extending the left and right leg a couple of times. Anything that gets that body moving. Um, walking briskly, wherever I go, I always, I'm walking with a purpose, right? Um, I, I told my stepdaughter when she was younger, I said, Eliza, get that chin up, hold your shoulders back, and let's walk. Walk with a purpose. Walking with a purpose will take you everywhere. That's been my saying. Um, and then, of course, I said move during TV commercials. So at your place setting, you've got a, a sheet that, uh, that is uh, labeled jumpstart yourself to your self-care. You see this sheet? At the very top, you will see that I've outlined all the six things that I'm sharing with you on the slides of how you can get those activated in your, to your life right away. If these don't resonate with you, I've left you an area where you can write down six things that you want to jumpstart in your wellness journey, okay? So the first thing that you'll see on the sheet, and there'll be this at the bottom of every slide, is to move every hour and walk 15 to 30 minutes every day. How many of you are already doing something like that? Raise your hand. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Okay, so you're walking, you're moving, that is excellent. Are you consistent? You're doing it a couple times a week, every day? Five times a week, so you've got a great program. And how does that make you feel? Wonderful. One mile every morning. One mile every morning, he's got it right there. So seven days a week, uh, one mile of walking is excellent. The other thing I wanted to share with you on increasing movement and exercise, I'm going to provide a buzzword. I like to call them buzzwords. This is going to go a little bit deeper into why it's so important to move throughout the day. And that buzzword, and you can write it down and research a little bit more on it, is mitochondrial biogenesis. 
<laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm going to try to break it down for you. Mitochondrial biogenesis is the growth and replication of mitochondria in your body. They are the energy powerhouses for every cell in your body. Okay? The only reason you can, one of the reasons you can walk is because of your performance in your mitochondria. Okay? Seriously. As we get older, we lose the ability to generate more mitochondria as well as maintain the integrity of the existing ones. This can result in fatigue. How many of us experience fatigue? If you're going through that, this could be a possibility. I'm not saying it is, but if you're not moving and you're not getting some exercise in your day, those mitochondria are slowly but surely dying off and there are not any that are being replaced. And remember, this is your body's powerhouse, your cell's powerhouse to have that energy that you want and need. So it can result in fatigue, accelerated aging, muscle loss, and a perfect setup for the start of diseases. Studies show that there is a direct correlation between exercise and the improvement of mitochondrial function. So I don't know about you, uh, but you know my goal is to live a very high quality and long life. So I wanna learn more about my mitochondria. I wanna learn more about how do I feed my existing mitochondria so that they stay healthy, and how do I build more mitochondria for more energy to stave off diseases so that 10 years from now I'm not faced with some type of illness that, that I really didn't want. Mitochondrial biogenesis, increasing movement and exercise. One thing you can start right away over the next seven days is move every hour and walk 15 to 30 minutes every day. And if you're doing more than that, give yourself a hand for sure. Um, next slide. Nourishing your body through bio-individual food plan. Let me explain bio-individual. Um, this was a term and a philosophy that I learned in my studies with the Integrative uh, Institute for Nutrition out of New York City. And I'm so thankful that they are promoting this because we are not the same. You know, this thing of, well, this diet worked for this person, this exercise plan made that person look that way, then that it must be good, so I'm going to do it. Or I'm not going to be accepted if I'm not in the circle doing what everybody else is doing. That, it, it, that no longer exists. It's finding what works for you from an exercise movement standpoint and from a food plan. Notice I don't like to use the D word, diet. It's more about healthy eating and a good food plan. So I just, here, here's my thing. Ideally, we need to consume three meals that are power packed with nutrients and minerals. When we think about moving our bodies and building our mitochondria, what do you think has to happen? Besides exercise, we've got to fuel the body nutritiously. And I'll talk about this here. I like this food too, and I eat this food from time to time. I, always, I have this 80-20 rule, unless I'm dealing with or anyone's dealing with some health issues, that you have to stay rigid with your eating plan. But 80% of the time, I try to stay consistent and eating the right kinds of foods that are going to keep my body well. Other 20%, yeah, I'm going to have some chocolate, I'm going to have a hamburger, uh, those kind of things. So I encourage you to not be completely rigid unless your medical situation uh, requires you to do so. So this is an example. Anybody can do this. You do not have to buy the products that I have bought. I'm going to sh uh, show, uh, show those to you here shortly. But this is something that I may not have every morning, but I have uh, almost every morning. One, when you do a smoothie, it gives your digestive system a chance to rest. We're chronically snacking and eating all day long. We never give our digestive system a time to rest and regroup and gain its own health. Because if it's constantly working on digesting everything that we keep putting in our mouth, it's very difficult to have a good in, 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 have integrity within the 
uh, the gut system. So that's one reason why I like smoothies. The other reason is because I can pour everything in there nutritious that I can. So you see, um, I found this company. It's, she's actually an IIN alumni that graduated with me, and she started her own company. It's called Truvani. And this is a plant-based protein. It has five ingredients or less, so you know you're not getting chemicals and all kinds of things you can't pronounce. Um, it's got fiber in it. And it's got a couple of other things in there that is super, super nutritious. It's like 20-something grams of protein. Let me say this about protein. Everybody's protein crazy with the keto diets, aren't they? So might work. I, I could see myself prescribing this for someone just to maybe do a jump start on weight loss or to cleanse their body from a, that, that's been on a real high, high-carbohydrate diet all their life. But I don't think keto is healthy long-term. High protein amounts, especially if you have mild, moderate, or severe kidney um, disease, high protein content is not good for the kidneys. So be careful with that. But protein is important uh, for, for muscle strength and for keeping our muscles on our body and not losing that. This is a mix that I use. I also like to use her marine wild-caught collagen. Um, for muscles and tendons and bones and skin. Um, as the, uh, the older we get, and we don't even have to, 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 to be aging for this to happen, um, our joints begin to play out and they begin to hurt and we begin to get arthritis. So this is another good product. I put a scoop of that in my smoothie. And then you can see I load it up with fiber. Uh, Bob's Red Mill Organic Flaxseed, I like to put about a tablespoon or so of that in there. Or um, you can Google Clean Move. It's another company that is an apple and oat fiber. Delicious, tasteless. So it's not really delicious, but it's delicious in the fact that it, it's delicious in the fact of what it does for our bodies. Okay? So regulating bowel movements, cleansing out the colon. Uh, it's excellent. So one of the two, and sometimes I put both. If I really want a, a high-fiber smoothie, I'll do both. I love frozen blueberries. They're full of polyphenols. They're great for reducing uh, cancer chances. I use a lettuce mix or spinach, big handful right, right in there. Uh, you can use strictly water, almond milk, or coconut milk. I love almond milk. Delicious. Um, I'll sometimes, not all the time, we have to be careful about our salt intake. I might do a pinch of Himalayan salt and then, I don't know, six, seven ice cubes and then I really blend that up well. Really, really nice. Gives my digestive system a rest. It doesn't have to chew all that food up. And then I've got a power pack nutritious meal that's feeding my what? Let's see if you remember the buzzword. Mitochondria. The mitochondria. Your cell's powerhouse. All right, let's see what we've got next. All right, one thing you can do over the next seven days on that uh, previous slide was to make at least one meal power-packed with nutrients and minerals. If you can't do three, start out making one meal power-packed with nutrients. I always say, hey, if you've got a hectic day or you did a lot of entertaining, you traveled and you didn't get to eat as well as you wanted to, try to make at least one meal a good one, a salad. Most restaurants carry salads. I eat the heck out of salads. I'm blessed because I love everything about salads. Okay, next slide. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. We got to back up just a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. The, the buzzword for nourishing your body through bio-individual food plan is this. And this is kind of how I coach people is the term crowding out. Okay, If you've ever been on a diet, it's likely that one of the first rules included was a list of foods to avoid. With these type diets, the most common outcome, we know, is a gradual return to that weight gain. The crowding out theory refers to the natural process that happens when you add more of the good stuff first, creating less room for the bad stuff. Does that make sense? So if we're eating from the ground up, we're eating healthy, we're going to be less hungry and less opportunity to put the bad stuff in our daily food plan. 
you will literally crowd out the unhealthy foods until you reach a balanced diet that is sustainable and makes you feel great. Not what makes Robin feel great, but what makes you feel great. That's why you have to experiment while you are on your wellness journey. You have to find out what works for you. You may find that this protein smoothie causes gut discomfort for you. You know, this might be great for me, but for Vanessa, it might create low energy and intestinal problems. So you have to figure out what's going to be right for you. This is just an example of how you can get power-packed nutrients in one meal. Okay, the next one. Create a plan for stress reduction and life balance. A biggie. Meditation, meditation, meditation. What is the big deal about meditation? Anyone want to be bold? I'm just curious. Anybody meditate? No. Okay, that's fine. I Listen, for years I could not figure out what is this thing about meditation. I've got to sit cross-legged. I've got to put my fingers together. I've got to close my eyes. I've got to go, hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be that. Um, but I will tell you, going through my studies at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, I finally understood the value in meditation and how very simple the process can be. I am promoting the 468 breathing because this is the basic principle of meditation. It takes less than 60 seconds. You can do it anywhere, and guess what? It works. It works. So it looks like this. It's inhale. Hold it five, uh, hold it six, excuse me, and then exhale for eight. And I tell you, I do this multiple times throughout the day because it keeps me rooted and grounded on what is important. And if it's been a scattered day, a flustered day, it keeps me focused on what's important. If emotions are at a height, it brings my emotion down and it centers me. And you know another reason why that's important to do that? Because if I walk around all day long ruminating over something that just happened, full of emotion, full of anger, full of frustration, what is that going to do the in to the integrity of how my body's working on the inside? It goes back to your platform. What kind of platform are you trying to build for the longevity and quality of your life? When you start to go deep and think about it this way, you begin to make different choices. You make different actions. Now I think, wait a minute, this person upset me, but do I really want to walk around all day with that? I don't. So, hold it for six and exhale for eight. Right now that makes me feel so good. And it takes practice. I know it looks stupid. I thought it was stupid. But now I know it's not stupid and I know it works. And it helps my inside. I don't want to build up of cortisol where I'm, my whole body's in a state of stress constantly. And guess what that does to your body? Creates inflammation. If you have chronic stress, it creates chronic inflammation, not acute inflammation, but chronic. Chronic meaning it just goes on and on and on. And what does chronic inflammation do over a period of time? It can wreak havoc on our blood vessels. It can wreak havoc on our heart. It can wreak havoc on our organs. And then five years down the road, you're going to the doctor and you're not well. My job, my hope, is that my message to everybody that I speak and everybody that I coach, that it gives you hope that there is a way to live better, to live your best life, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what age, right? It is possible because I've lived it. I've studied it, I've learned it, I've lived it, I've built it in my life. And this is the platform I stand on because I know it works for me and I know it can work for you. And we can modify and tweak it so that it suits your lifestyle and it suits your medical situation and your goals and dreams. Okay, so four, six, eight. One thing you can do, here's something that you can implement over the next seven days. If you want to get started on your wellness journey, here we go. Disconnect and practice the 468 breathing several times daily. It's on your Jump Start to Self Care form, all written out for you. Okay? And let's go to that next slide. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is important. 
Here's something interesting. Let me, I got to share this with you. I am uh, listening to an audio book called Length and Longevity. And I know to all of you, you go, this is boring. My husband, he just, he, does, he can't relate. But this is my kind of reading. So let me share with you a little bit about the lymphatic system and the breathing that I'm talking about. When we, let me start right here. When we inhale for four, we hold for six, and we push out all of the air in that eight count, that all the air that you have in your lungs completely out until you feel your abdominal muscles contract, okay? So it, it, it's inhale, exhale, and then I'm pushing all that air out of my lungs until I feel my abdominals get tight. This stimulates the lymphatic system. Okay, so mitochondrial is an internal thing that we don't think about that we need to, and the lymphatic system is something that we need to think about that we don't. Well, well I feel good, Robin. I'm fine. I, I sit half the day, and I like to watch my TV shows, and, you know, I walk a little bit, but we really don't think about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is our river that flows throughout our body that should look like the Caribbean waters and not a sewage system. But when we don't treat our bodies right and we're not moving and we're not exercising and we're not feeding it the proper nutrients, guess what can happen? It can clog up and become a sewer system. And then when we have invaders come into our body and those cancer cells are real tricky. They camouflage themselves, you know, where the uh, immune system and the white blood cells don't really recognize it. The lymphatic system brings all those uh, properties to that invader and kills it and gets rid of it. If you have a sluggish lymphatic system, you're setting yourself up years down the road for something that's not going to be good. I'm not saying that that will happen 100% of the time, but when we're talking about developing and creating your platform of wellness, you need to think deeper than just exercise and salads. What is really going on inside of my body? You know, we can't expect this beautiful life that God has given us. We really can't expect to live quality if we're abusing it. If we're not taking care of our house. And so these are the self-care principles that I wanted to share with you today, hopefully to jumpstart you and get you thinking a little bit differently about the simple aspects of wellness. The lymphatic system, when you do that four, six, eight breathing, most of our lymphatic system is located in our lungs. And this is what happened with COVID, you know, right? A lot of this gathered up in the lungs and because our lymphatic system was not flowing well and it was probably polluted, it created problems. So when we do this, inhale four, hold for six, and exhale eight, and really push to where your abdominal muscles contract, guess what we're doing? We, sitting in the car, sitting right there, we can move our lymphatic system and get it flowing. Okay, that's important. Might not seem important, but it's really important when we're looking at this. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're going to master healing sleep, and I think, let's see what I've got here. Bear with me just a second, because I think my sheets got out of balance. <laughs> okay. We got that and that. Okay. Mastering healing sleep. This is another thing that people don't really think about, but it is super important. How many of you sleep well at night? Or how many of you don't sleep well at night? Raise your hand. Okay. And what's your sleep pattern like? Is it broken? You go to bed late? Or you go to bed early? And then you wake up a couple of times in the night? One time. One time. That's not bad. A couple of times? Two times? Yeah. Huh? Six... Oh, really, six to eight times you wake up? Yeah. What that does <laughs> is when our sleep is interrupted, it takes us all the way back to the beginning of the sleep cycle. And we can never really get high-quality deep and REM. And deep and REM sleep are different stages of our sleep pattern, 
but you have to have deep and REM to restore the body. Studies show that adults need at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night. We know this. I average about seven to seven and a half hours per night, and I find that that is my magic number. I've had to experiment, okay? But there is more to it than total number of sleeping hours. You need to manage your day and right up to going to bed so that you can get adequate amounts of that deep and REM sleep that I was talking about. It is important because these sleep stages boost immune function, repair muscles and tissues, learning, memory function, helping your brain consolidate and process information, and increases energy reserves. We might feel good boasting that we only need four or five hours of sleep each night, but it will be impossible for you to enter into those healing stages of sleep, and it will catch up with you sooner or later, okay? Quality sleep, that is on your form of one thing that you can implement is cutting out caffeine by 12 noon, and no, <laughs> yeah, and no eating two to four hours before bedtime. That's probably the worst thing you can do, because when you go to bed on a full stomach, Jesse, your body's doing what? It's the energy is digesting. It's not getting you prepared for that healing sleep, okay? So mastering that healing sleep when we, um, is, is very important. And I gave you a couple of things up here uh, that you could write down and take away. I have found that the app, Insight Timer, do any of you use your phones like that and have apps on it where you frequent those or no? Nope. That's okay. Um, that is perfectly okay. I have found that this app, I will use at night a lot. There's guided sleep meditations. I used it last night. It was about an hour long. And I close my eyes, and I do the deep breathing, and they have this special toned music that resonates with your audio system. And um, it, it just created an incredible sleep for myself. Um, I also have the Venue 2 Garmin watch. I like to track my sleep. You don't have to, but it's just another tool that you can do. If you're serious about your wellness journey, if you're serious about continuing to live your life quality, living your best life, you might want to think about a watch that tracks your sleep. I wake up, I get to see how many hours did I sleep, how many times did, did I wake up, uh, how, how long did I spend in deep and REM, and how long did I spend in light sleep. And then if it wasn't a good score, I think about, well, what did I do yesterday that created this? And then I try to correct that for the next day. Because I know sleep is super, super important. Um, bedroom clutter. You want your bedroom to be an oasis. Have your bedroom clean and, and make it look and feel the way is comfortable to you. Um, they say sleeping on the cooler side. Okay, keeping your body just a slightly cooler uh, is, is better. Disconnecting from blue light, so computers, cell phones, cut that out at least one hour before the bedtime. Taking an Epsom salt bath. It's really good because it's loaded with magnesium. I sometimes don't have time for a bath, so I'll just use it as a scrub on my body. And it, I get to absorb that magnesium, which also is a property that gives me restful sleep at night. Melatonin and magnesium are known to aid in relaxation and pre prepare you for restful sleep, but I tell everybody this. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. So I tell you, if you're thinking about supplements or medications, you need to bring that up with your physicians, okay? I have found in my own wellness journey that melatonin and magnesium work for me at this stage of my life. Okay. Cutting out caffeine, that's going to be tough. Hey, I was going to show you this real quick. This is another product made by Truvani. Uh, do we have coffee drinkers in here? A right. couple? I don't like coffee. I don't drink coffee. But I discovered this product w by Truvani. It's called Protein Plus Energy. Um, in my opinion, it has a lot of caffeine, 87 milligrams of caffeine. You could do a half a scoop. Janice, and, and put it in your almond milk and wouldn't have as much caffeine if that was an issue. Um, it's also got 12 grams of protein. It's got the good fat, the, what they call the MCT oil, which is the healthy fat for you. And it's also got good herbs and other properties in it. It is delicious. Chocolate mocha. 
I put, I had it this morning, a scoop with almond milk and some ice cubes. I put my marine collagen in there. And I also have a designated pre and probiotic that was made from the company just for my own microbiome. This, well, this wasn't in my script to tell you, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. It's a company, <laughs> it's a company called Viome, V-I-O-M-E. I learned this through my education uh, in New York City as well. For a $175 investment, they will send you three pipettes and a way to prick your finger and a stool sample kit. So I drew three pipettes of blood from my finger. Okay, went right by the directions. I did the stool samples that they needed, folded and sent that all off to the company. It took about six weeks. They put it in their laboratory. They spun everything down and tested every inch of my blood, every inch of my cells, and every inch of my stool sample. But it comes back with this incredible report of what I did not score optimally on and what I scored really, really well on. And I don't mind telling you, I didn't score very well on my cellular health. Um, the pathways that feed my mitochondria, I didn't score very well on that. And I kind of figured it all out because last November I began to see some muscle loss and I began to experience some fatigue. So this was the perfect resource. And the last slide is about getting supportive resources. If you really are serious about this and you want to know how to make your body well and keep it well, you got to put in the work. You know, you got to you got to do these things. Um, so this it came back with a report and I was able to see everything about my gut and everything about my cellular level and they created a vitamin comes in a little pack of eight pills that I take specifically four in the morning four at night and it also comes with a little pack of probiotics so I put that in my smoothie in the morning so I know I'm feeding my microbiome the bugs that it needs to keep me healthy y'all have all read that the center of our wellness is in our intestines, right? Does everybody know that or no? You do? Yeah. This is where it is. It's not the heart. It's here. So this has got to be healthy so that everything else works well. So can you start in your mind to begin to piece the information that I'm sharing with you and how that all interlocks and leads, one feeds the other, so that you are able to live your best life and live a well life? And all of this that I'm sharing with you are just s examples and samples that you could try if you wanted to. Okay, mastering healing sleep. Cut out caffeine by 12 noon and no eating two to four hours before bedtime. Let's go to the next slide. Develop an interdisciplinary health care team. This is important. People laugh at me. People say they brush me off, but this is important. And I'm so thankful and blessed that I work for an organization that is the well source for our community and our greater region, the greater Silicaga region. Okay? Um, you need to have a list of doctors and a list of healthcare providers that support your well being. Okay? These are just some examples. I have a chiropractor on my list, I have uh, massage therapy on my list. By the way, massage therapy is great for working the lymphatic system, pushing that fluid and making it flow through the body. Um, I've been to almost all of these doctors for one reason or the other, and I have files on each one of these, and I keep my medical records there. Today, and Coosa Valley Medical Center has that, we have a portal. So you don't necessarily have to create a paper file. You've got all your lab results and all your images and everything that you need in that portal. So this is super, super important. Um, my question to you is, what does your health care team look like? What checkups and maintenance visits are you neglecting because you say to yourself you're too busy? And over the past two years, as Vanessa mentioned earlier, COVID put us behind. So we've got to get back on track taking care of ourselves. The key here is to get your health care team organized and on paper Know what areas support your self-care and write them down on your HCT grid. So I got you a copy here that you can take home with you. 
This is an example. Go on and write those things down. And if you don't have them already established, write the ones down that you think you might need in the future. Talk to people. Ask them, who's a good cardiologist? We've got multiple disciplines right here in Sylacauga that you don't have to drive anywhere. Really high-quality, great physicians. Create that HCT grid. So one thing you can do over the next seven days to jumpstart your wellness journey, complete your HCT grid using this blank copy. Very important. The buzzword. The ma'am, <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> mitochondrial, yeah, mitochondrial biogenesis. I, I'm, I'm, that's great, you, you got it almost right. The, the buzzword for this slide is now. N-O-W, so write it down now. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Although I believe the body can heal itself if given half the chance, that half the chance often includes one or two disciplines, healthcare disciplines, okay? And if you don't have a healthcare team grid, if you don't know who you're going to call and what you're going to do, and you come up with your annual visit with your physician and something that has gone awry, that's going to add more stress. And going back to that slide, we don't need added stress. And if we are in a stressful situation, how do we successfully and healthfully help our bodies go through that st stressful time? I always told Eliza, my stepdaughter, proper planning prevents poor performance. And I carry that over into my own health journey. You know, plan. Plan for your life. What's, what is more important than your life? What investment is more important than your well-being? We invest in our 401ks. We invest in our churches. We invest in our children. We invest in stocks and bonds. We invest in our careers and our jobs. We invest in our children. Are we investing in ourselves? That's the million-dollar question. Nothing or, or, nothing or no one should be more important than the investment that you make in yourself. Because I know God put you on this earth and has a plan and purpose for your life. He also gives us plenty of resources to ensure that we can live as good and as rich of a life as possible. We can't defy our genes. Okay? We're born with a certain set of genes. But and we know that at some point in time, those genes may be expressed and we may deal with a medical condition. But with, with having your platform built of what's important to you, proper planning prevents poor performance. You'll be on the ball. I need to call this doctor. I need to call this person on my support team because they believe in me and they won't call me a hypochondriac. You've got all these resources together that can help you in a stressful time and that can get you on your way to healing your body. If that makes sense, I hope it does. Being too busy or in a state of denial will knock you off your platform down the road. Trust me, it's done it to me and it'll do it to you. So be proactive and make it happen now, okay? Um, next slide. Identify educational and supportive resources. This is huge. I would not be where I am today. Janice is shaking her head. I would not be where I am today if I had not dug deep into resources. And today there is a plethora of knowledge out there. Whether you get it on the television, whether you get it on your computer, whether you network with friends, you're having coffee over at, at uh, McDonald's and you're talking to your buddies, you know, You've got, we've all got a plethora of resources that we can pull from when it comes to supporting our wellness journey. I've got up here podcast, TED Talks, audiobooks. I love audiobooks. If you drive a lot, if you guys like to travel, having that audiobook on there. Um, reach out to a close family member, a trustworthy friend, a pastor, an accountability coach, a counselor who can support you along the way. This is important. I'm not saying that, you know, we've got to be uh, Pollyanna all the time. But, but there is good stuff to being optimistic. There is good stuff to seeing the glass half full. And my encouragement to you is, 
You need to be around people who embrace self-life change, possibility, forward thinking, and positive action. Surround yourself with like-minded people. And that's not to say, well, they don't think like me, so I don't want to be around them. It's not that. But you need to have that group of people that are like-minded, that can lift you and support you, because the world can be tough and people can be tough. They can be a naysayer in your life, and then you go, oh, you know what, they're really right. This is dumb, this is stupid, I'm not going to do it. No. If it matters to you, you need to do it. Hey, I appreciate your viewpoint, but I think I'm going to travel this road. And I've had to do that hundreds of times, okay? Negative disposition should not have room in your circle. So here, here's my comments on identifying educational supportive resources. The question is who and what are we investing in to assist us in our self-care growth? Growing ourselves is crucial when building our platform of stability, resiliency, and longevity on rock. Maybe our educational what is that we choose to take a special class, read books, go back to school. The key is to start now with navigating through that plethora of resources that I mentioned earlier. The buzzword here for this slide, I chose insurance plan, and it's not Blue Cross Blue Shield. Ma'am? Ricky Deason. Not Ricky Deason. We all know Ricky Deason, don't we? I like to view this as our supportive who. Who is on your insurance plan of support? If I were to ask you, who, who is one person that supports you in your, in your life, wellness journey, besides your spouse, can you answer that? Do they have a front row seat in your circle? Are they positive? Do they believe in you? Do they lift you up? Do they help you night or day? These are the people that stand for you. You can call them, as I just said, day or night, and they are there for you. They are good listeners. They offer good advice in a non-judgmental way. And guess what? As I've said before, they believe in you. Who wants to be labeled a hypochondriac? I don't. You just need people to listen to you. That's all. So make sure you, you find that support group, those support people, and write them down. That's going to be... The one thing you can do over the next seven days that's going to help you on your wellness journey, write down the people who are part of your support system and make sure they have a what? A front row seat. And you know what? Take it a step further and go tell them, hey, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for caring about me. I just need you to know you're special to me. I need you to know I value, you know, your presence in my life. And lastly, this is not up on the slides, but know your numbers. Wow, what a great opportunity today that if you already know your numbers, that you got to come in and refresh those numbers. Where you were six months ago may not be where you are today with your blood pressure. That is crucial. Know your baseline numbers, resting EKGs, pulse ox, blood pressure, cholesterol, CBC panels, liver function, kidney function. All of these things, I believe that we ought to have a comprehensive blood value at least one time a week. I do it twice a year. That blood work will tell you everything you need to know. Most of the time, it'll start right there. It'll be an indication of something, and then your doctor can help you kind of navigate through that and figure out what the problem is. So knowing your numbers is another huge part of your wellness journey. And with that being said, we're going to kind of conclude up here with, uh, with uh, a last slide. And I just I want to thank each of you for giving me the platform to share a message with you that I'm passionate about. It's been my life, okay? And I want to give that to you and let you know that no matter where you are in your life, what stage you are in your life, that this is possible. Living a better life, living your best life, is possible. And so you have the choice. What you do today when you walk out that door will determine your wellness journey. And I've given you this Jumpstart Your Self-Care as a format to get it going. Okay? 
I've also given you a grid to go ahead and write down, you know, a healthcare team and who's going to be on your support system. Implementation and action is everything. Knowledge is powerful, but unless we put things into action, we don't bear the fruit. Fruit doesn't grow. So my hope for you, this looks like a healthy group of people. My hope for you is that you continue to live a great life, a blessed life, a rich life. And if I can be of help to you at any point in time in your life, please let me know. I do have an eight-page handout that goes along with these slides. If you're interested in some of the information that I shared and even additional information, please let me know and I'll be glad to email that to you. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Robin. So do you feel motivated? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm like, whoo, that was some great information. So thank you for inspiring us, Robin, for motivating us. And what I want us to do is to always remember, you might be saying, you know what, I'm past that. It's too late for that. I think I might have made that statement today myself. So let's not think like that. Let's think positive that every day matters. And so, again, today's a good day to start that journey and find ourselves living well. I think we appreciate life and uh, being together and our health a lot more than we did maybe even a couple of years ago. So today's a good day to get us jump started, get us uh, reconnected to our uh, physicians. Again, if Coosa Valley Medical Center can do absolutely anything to help you be connected, that's what we're here for. So with that, I'm going to ask our team to come and let's give out these door prizes. Um, and in honor of Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a good weekend. And while I cannot sing the song, uh, we'll be back in September, but we will be back in September, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. So with that, we'll draw for our door prizes. Thank you for coming today. Jesse Cleveland.